So you like to jam with people? You might play guitar, you might sing, you might play another instrument. But there's nobody around, so what do you do? You grab an iPad and you grab Louis Pro and you install Groove Rider and I'll show you how to do it, how to set it up very quickly for the quickest way to get jamming. And we're going bottom right where it says plus, add audio unit input. And there are various other options like EG Pulse, DG6, etc. But the most complete one I've recently discovered for bass and drums and other instruments as a sequenced thing inside Loopy Pro is Groove Rider. It's mentioned here as GR16 Groove Rider. We add this and we see on channel 2 we now have Groove Rider installed. We're now going to press the two chevrons going up and immediately we're going to delete these so that when I'm playing the Groove Rider and I'm recording a clip with a guitar part or something like that that it doesn't also send Groove Rider to any of the clips because it's a sequent thing and it's a separate thing. Okay, we close this and now we're going to add some buttons. Let's first actually set a tempo. The tempo would go here and you tap. So I'm going to show you how I would do CQ for instance. You tap Dun, 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 dun. Uh, this can be different every time. This is the beauty about working with Loopy Pro and Groove Rider. It can all be completely live as if you're playing with real musicians and play it how you feel. So we've got the tempo set. We're now going to create a button by pressing edit. This is the little pencil here and the small of the squares creates a button. We're going to make it bigger. I'm going to call it Groove Rider and we're going to make it blue because blue is Groove Rider is blue. So then we press plus Audio source actions, mute, unmute, and another one, long press. We want a long press to open the audio unit interface. Okay, now we're cooking. Close the pencil. This is what you see. So we've got a tempo. And you notice as soon as I press start that the Groove Rider starts kicking a bass drum. I can switch it off. That didn't work, so hang on. Let me go back. Fix this. This is a good lesson. <laughs> because the press here, mute unmute, is null. It doesn't actually send the instruction to any particular Thing. So tap to select Groove Rider and then toggle is on and off, that's good. Now I do also realize that the long press doesn't actually go to anywhere particular. So tap to select Groove Rider and for this one we want it only to open it. Okay, so sorry about that for the fact that I didn't do that immediately. So now we've got the tempo. I can switch it on and off and it's back. Long press opens the Groove Rider interface. You see here the bass drum pumping away. This is a default set that you get AU initial and this is very handy actually. I find that the pumping bass drum is the best way to get going on loops and a groove because it's sequenced, it's completely reliable 
and it doesn't attract attention as such. You don't want to attract too much attention to the Groove Rider parts because you've got nothing to show for it. It's not like you've actually got a drummer sweating away in the back. You want to feel the support of the drums, but you don't want it to distract from what you're going to do on top. But I do want a snare in there. This is a generic setup, generic bass drum, generic snare, and you've got so many different options to change the sounds. And to start it, you record. Right, got a full drum kit there. Now on the bass. So I'm going to put the bass on the first part there. And I want to pick the sound I like for the bass. And there are loads of sounds to pick from. For now, I'm just going to use the synth bass 3 for the demonstration. So now when I go to keys, we're all, we've been on trigger, that's the default start. When you go to keys, you can start playing this particular instrument. So I play Suzy Q in D. Now this is way too high, so I'm going to go down two octaves. Now I've got a bass in there. All I have to do is record it. And we're away. So what I've done is I've told the drummer the tempo and I've told the bass player the key he's in. And this is the simplest possible starting point for a jam. It's now up to me to put the dynamics in with the guitar and the vocals. And the nice thing is that I can also have them switch off for a bit. And they're back in. These buttons can all be linked to a foot switch, which is very useful if you're a guitarist vocalist, so that I can switch this by a foot switch. And there are so many tutorials about how to do that with MIDI Learn. It's incredibly easy with uh, Loopy Pro to link a foot switch to any particular action or button. So let's switch him off for a bit. We go back to Groove Rider. Now I want to make this a, a general startup setup so that I can always call this up and when I reset to start a new song that a certain that, that we decide what we get from the start. So I'm going to save this here, this third button from the right. We save it as a new setup and for now I'm going to give it a six. I don't know actually not a six. I'll give it a one. Much more obvious. Save it. Just because it's easy because it'll be the top one. I've got lots of things already in there as Groove Rider so that'll be the first one that comes up for me to pick. So for a generic one, I don't want it to have all of this already there. So I'm going to, for now, delete, erase, it's this button here, the bass and the snare. So I just get the pumping bass drum. Now I'm going to send it, save it again. So that's now the generic setup for Groove Rider. And I'm going to show you how I use it in practice. For this, I want to add an extra button, which I find very useful. And we call it Reset. I use this after I finish every song and I make it red. And I only have a long press because I don't want to accidentally delete the whole thing in the middle of a song. So for the long press, I want to reset everything. I want to, for the session actions, I want to reset the clock so that I can start with a completely fresh tempo. And I also, for the clip actions, I want to clear clip and target I set to all clips because I want to 
any clips that I've added as loops in Loopy Pro, the loops are called clips. You know, I might have put some extra uh, guitar in and whatever else I want to add to the groove. It clears that with this particular action. Target all clips. And there's one more thing, if I remember what it is. Yes, long press. I also want it to go to the initial audio preset that I've just created for Groove Rider. So, target Groove Rider. This is the one I've just created, number one. That's the setup that I want to start with for a new song. Okay, we close this. No, actually we want to make it... I'm going to add a row here, a column here, by pressing that. And I want to put this here. And I'll tell you why. This is how I like it. It's a personal preference. That at the end of a song, I now automatically grab the side of the iPad and I hold it. And then it starts with a fresh clock. There's no clock particularly, and it starts with the particular, the, the initial setup I've got in Groove Rider. So let's do it again from scratch. We go to set the tempo, again through the cube, but this time I'm going to be a little bit slower to show you how I can decide how I want to play it, what feel I want. So one, two, three, four, it's quite a bit slower doesn't matter really, it's just for the example. I start the whole thing and again this can be all added as buttons and it can be triggered with foot switches. So now immediately when I start it I've got the generic bass drum in Groove Rider. Long press and we're back to where we were. Again I, I tell it to put that snare drum in Ah, this is where it's, <laughs> you have to get used to this, it's still on erase, it needs to be on trigger. And we're back with the main drum pattern, this time a bit slower. We're still on trigger, so we've got the bass sound in already. record and I've told the bass player which key to play in and the way we can go with a slightly slower more bluesy version of Suzy Q. As soon as I switch it off and reset I have to for the next song so let's do something quite a lot faster to give you an example. Start and I just have the bass drum. And then you open it and then make sure you got it on trigger. I can put anything in there I like. So these you can configure any way you like. Uh, this is something you have to get used to, Groove Rider. I just wanted to show you the quickest way to get a bass player and a drummer in your setup inside Loopy Pro. And why do I use this inside Loopy Pro? Well, I've showed you some big advantages already. That you can create these buttons which are incredibly useful so as soon as I realize I've done a certain something two or three times then I create the button and with one button like this one here I've got three actions that are initiated when I long press it you see so this is incredibly useful in the next video I might look at other ways to refine this but this is all I wanted to show you. This is how you get a bass drummer, a, <laughs> a bass player and a drummer added to your live set and get them to jam with you with the additional 
useful thing that they are completely in time because it's sequenced and quantized. Of course you can switch the quantizing off but unless you're very very good with your timing I would suggest that you keep it the simplest possible way and that it's quantized and then you get a very steady groove to start with. So again I've used this particular groove for a lot of songs because the bass drum is steady, the snare is the alternate one and it's the the best way to leave lots of space for dynamics so that the dynamics and the expression and the story all come from your playing and singing but with the very stable support of the bass and the drums. I hope you've enjoyed this.